Hello, I'm Anika from Made to Sew. In this short tutorial, I'm going to be sharing with you how to attach a hook and eye to a garment. We're going to be looking at the different hook and eyes that are available, their uses, and how to attach them with a stitch that's both neat and secure. So what is a hook and eye? Well, a hook is, like it says, a little hook of wire. The eye is basically an eyelet or a sort of half circle shape. And these two will connect together to provide a secure fastening for your garment or product. Now hook and eyes come in a variety of different sizes, from very tiny to quite large. The ones that I've got here are made from wire, but you can purchase metal hook and eyes that are even sturdier. In terms of the colours, you'll generally find silver, white and black as the common colours, but I believe that others are available. You want to choose the size and colour of the hook and eye that's the most inconspicuous on your garment or product. So where can you find a hook and eye? You'll often find them at the top of a skirt or pair of trousers. The same goes for a top or a dress. This can be above a zipper or separate to a zipper. You'll also find them in couture sewing, in waist stays, in lingerie, there are numerous uses that you can use a hook and eye for. Fastening the front of a jacket, the list goes on. Now hook and eyes are especially good because they can be used to fasten either overlapping or adjacent edges. In this tutorial I'm going to share the method that I use for attaching hook and eyes. You don't want the hook and eye to fall off and therefore I use a buttonhole stitch for strength and security. I have a separate tutorial that shows the buttonhole stitch if you would like to see this. I'll pop a link to that in the description box below. So let's take our hook and eyes and I'm going to show you how to position them on your fabric and how to sew them in place. We're going to start by looking at this scrap of fabric here and I'm going to be showing you how to sew the hook and eye on. Hopefully this will be nice and clear before we then look at a garment and how it's sewn onto a garment. I would like you to begin by threading a needle with a double thread. If you'd like to know how I thread my needles with a double thread, I'll pop a link to a tutorial in the description box below. I thread them with this method so that there's a tiny little knot behind the eye of the needle, and this stops you from getting the threads tangled, which is quite common with a double thread. For strength and security, I'd also recommend that you run the thread through some beeswax. So, to begin, we're going to be looking with the wrong side of your fabric facing up. So whether you're attaching this to a waistband or the top of a garment, you want the wrong side of the fabric to be facing up and the hook is going to go on the left side here. The eyelet will go on the right side. So we want to position the hook approximately one eighth, three millimeters away from the edge of your fabric. This is so that it can't be seen. We don't want this to be visible. So we're starting on the hook side. We're starting that one eighth of an inch, three mil from the edge of the fabric. You can draw this on if you'd like with chalk or a removable pen. The placement of the hook and eye will depend on the garment that you're working with. And you'll also have to think about how many hook and eyes you want to include in that garment. Again, it does depend on the placement, where you're using it, the strength you require, etc. Now, I tend to go in with the thread where I'm going to be positioning my hook on so that I can hide my starting. I've just gone in and you can see I've got a little knot at the end of my thread there. I trimmed the tail nice and close to that. And I'm just gonna sew on top of that two or maybe three times. We're always not going through to the right side of our garment here. You can catch the back of that, but you must make sure that you don't go through to the right side. Make sure that your thread isn't too long because you can end up with that causing a bit of a mess and getting caught. Okay, so now I've secured my thread, I'm going to position my hook. And I'm actually going to position the hook on top of this. So as well as sewing in the two little holes we've got there, you also need to sew across the sort of front of the hook, the underneath side. And what this will do is it will anchor the hook, it will stop it from flapping about, and it will just make it a little bit stronger as well. 
So I'm positioning my hook where I want it. As I said, the edge of it should be about one eighth, three mil away from the edge of the fabric. So the thread goes underneath the hook. Then you take the needle and it goes in and out, just the width of the hook, no more. You want to try and make this as inconspicuous as possible. You'll find it easier with a smaller needle, probably. If you're using a large needle, it's quite difficult to get the movement that you need. And I'll do that about two or three times to secure that bottom edge of the hook there. Obviously, I'm using a thread that clearly stands out. You'll use a thread the same colour as your fabric, and you'll use a hook and eye that matches best with your fabric. Now we've secured the front edge of the hook, we're going to go to the back and secure the two little holes there. You could change thread if you wanted to, but I find it neater to use the same thread so that you're not having to start and restart. To do that, I will probably do one more of those underneath the hook stitches, and this time when I put my needle in, I'll keep the needle underneath the fabric and bring it up in one of those holes. So now we're going to be completing a buttonhole stitch, and this is going to be much securer and neater than sewing over and over yourself in and out of the hole here. So I'm holding the other eye of the hook here to try and hold this in position. And we've come out with the thread in the center of the hook. We're now going to go in and out from outside the wire edge of the circle to the inside and we're going to pull that through. Now, instead of doing a normal stitch here, we're actually now left with a loop. And what we're going to do is to go through the center of the loop from the front to the back, just like so. And you're gonna keep pulling on this, and this will make a very small knot on the top of the stitch that you're created. And this is what is similar to the blanket stitch or the buttonhole stitch. So in and out, pulling through until you're left with a loop, make sure the loop's not twisted, through the loop, from the front to the back. There we go. And you want to do, I don't know, say four or five of these to make sure that it's nice and secure around the eye. If you want a close-up version of how to do the buttonhole, I've got a specific little tutorial that just shows you the stitch, so it might be worth watching that as well. I'll pop a link to that in the description box below. And maybe this would be my final stitch here, so I'm going to go through the loop, and there we go. And you can see how neat that is compared to, to just a standard stitch that would be stitching on top of one another. Now, what we want to do is to take the thread in, and then we're going to come out in the center of the other eye. Now we're in the other eye, we're going to do the same thing. In and out. Once a loop has been created, we'll go through the loop, from the front to the back. And again, in and out, and through the loop from the front to the back. And you'll do this again so that it's nice and secure. And when you're finished, depending on what this is, you can either take your thread to the underside of the fabric and tie it off, you can sew over yourself or lose your thread. Depends on your garment and where you've got access to. To find the placement for the eye, position the eye onto the hook and hold your garment or whatever it is you're making together, closed. Now, you want to make sure that you've lined up the garment so that you know the exact location for the eye. One thing to note here is that when you're actually wearing the product or garment, depending what it is, you will get a little bit more strain between the hook and the eye. So you might find that you actually need to place the eye a little bit further towards the inside of the garment than you're thinking at this point. For example here, it would look like my eye should be quite close to the edge, but in fact I probably, in a garment, would still place the edge of the eye 
about one eighth, one sixteenth, so two to three millimeters away from the edge to make sure that it was still unseen when finished. And it had the ability to take a little bit of pressure. I hope that makes sense. So on the inside of the garment, the hook is on the left, the eyelet is on the right. This is the wrong side of our fabric sitting up and you can see that I've just sort of put a bit of tape to hold this one in place. You're more than welcome to do that, just check that it doesn't damage your fabric. Again, I've come out in the middle of the eye and I had a knot but you could again just sew over yourself to make this easier. And we're going to be doing the same buttonhole stitch. I generally start with the top little hole here and then work onto the bottom one either side of the wire and through the loop from the front to the back. Once you've done enough stitches on this side, again, you'll take the needle in and we'll take it to the center of the other hole. And we'll do exactly the same thing there. I'll leave you to do that and then I'm gonna show you how to actually anchor your hook down. The other thing that I like to do with the eyelet is to anchor down either side of the front and what this will do is to stop it from flapping around. Just like you did with the hook, you're going to want to sew in and out a very small stitch over the wire just to hold that in place. You probably only need to do one or two stitches and then we can finish the threads off again in your chosen manner. This will depend on the garment that you're working with, whether you can go behind and tie a knot, or whether you have to sew over yourself, or lose your thread. Here we have the finished hook and eye. Looking at this from the front, there is an ever so slight dip where the two join, a little bit more fabric. But when we give this a pull, like you would have in a garment, the join sits flat beautifully together. Hopefully you can see the hook and eye that I've positioned at the top of my zip fastening on this garment. Obviously I wouldn't have gone with a black hook and eye, but I wanted to make it nice and visible for you. If I were to open the hook and eye, you will see how much the top opens and there's much more of a gap at the top of the zipper. I really hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and that you feel more confident about attaching hook and eyes in the future. Using the buttonhole stitch that I showed you, you shouldn't have a problem with them coming off. They should be nice and secure. So whether you're introducing a hook and eye onto a garment you've made, or perhaps you're just replacing one that's fallen off on a high street garment, I wish you all the best. Good luck with your sewing and thanks for watching.